Gray area. Scene one. A Bob Dylan song plays. Interior, a bar. Late afternoon. When are we? A dive bar. Christmas slash Halloween lights twinkle, providing the only illumination. A jukebox plays. Scott and Max sit at the end of their bar, with each their own beer, a filled shot glass besides each of them. Hmm. Scariest horror movie, go. The Grudge. Dumb. Why is that dumb? You didn't even say which version, American or Japanese? Uh, American. Dumb. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you think is the scariest? 27 dresses. What? You heard me. Why? Too many dresses. Fine, 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 fine. You want to hear my real answer? Wait, that wasn't? Ernest Scared Stupid. No, that, that's, that is a kid's movie. You're a kid's movie. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, look, here's why it's scary. One, it's a troll who turns kids into statues. He comes into their home, hides under their bed, and sometimes he's in their bed. Oh, on top of that, look at Ernest. Ernest? He's a 50-something-year-old man who lives alone with his just his dog and spends all of his time with the neighborhood kids. That's worrisome at best. Uh, all right, I'll drink to that. Each tap their shot glasses to the bar, then down it. They get up and start to head to the door. <clears throat> oh, I should get going. It's late. I guess that means I should get out of here. Don't forget to close your tab. <laughs> <laughs> Max has bunched up bills and change from his pocket and puts them on the bar before heading to the door. What about yours? Huh? What's your favorite horror movie? I don't know. Uh, I guess why have a favorite scary movie when we're living one, right? Oh, should I be driving? I've had a couple of beers. Yeah, you could kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> they take their beers with them. A Bob Dylan song plays. The camera goes through the window behind them and to the outside. We see that it is abandoned. Something ominous is in the air, which is confirmed when we see the bodies of dead and the smoke from the burning city in the distance. Scott and Max, now tiny in our scope, down their drinks and throw the empty glasses to the road. The breaking of glass brings us to the past. Scene two. Interior, law firm, Amanda's office, morning, the past. We hear something shatter. Liv is bent down, picking up the pieces of a broken mug. Liv, it's fine. I didn't even like that mug. I swear, I didn't even see it. Seriously, Liv, it's... It's, it was from my stepdad. I should have looked where I was putting that contract. Fine, there's, there was nothing in it anyways, and it only holds paper clips and it barely does that well. Okay. So. Can your stepdad get you another one? Honestly, I would rather he splurge and get me a new stepdad. I'm kidding, Liz. I was going to say. I know, I know. I've met Rick and he's super nice. Uh, I know, it's the worst. Still, I'm sorry I broke it. Don't worry, I, I won't tell him. Wow, you're really jumpy, aren't you? I know, I know, I know. Review time? Yeah, at my 90 days today. Honestly, Liv, are you actually worried? Uh, you're the hardest working assistant here, even if the attorney you're assigned to is a pain. You're not all that bad. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. I'm kidding. I think it's funny that you worry about these things all the time. I can't help it. Oh, trust me, I'm well aware. <laughs> you got me the job and I don't wanna let you down. You could never let me down, girl. I mean, come on, Livy. Channel your inner Beyonce. Who runs the world? Oh, geez. Yeah. Who runs the world? Don't make me say it, mans. Who runs the world? That song came out forever ago. Who runs the world? Someone is going to hear you. Oh, for the love of God, Liv, just say it. Girls. That's right! We run the world. And even in these Neanderthals don't even know it yet. That's why we need to have each other's backs. I've, I've got your back. Do you have mine, Liv? I've got your back. Louder. I've got your back. We stick together no matter what. No matter what. No matter. The two women shake hands. Scene three, exterior city street, early afternoon, the present. We see Liv in the same suit she was in earlier, but it's now beaten up and torn. She's standing with Bo, Hammond, and Billy. There are other people milling about them as well, and they all seem to be listening to someone. 
whose commanding voice slowly fades in. We cut to Liv's point of view, where we see a group of four extremely badass-looking heroes commanding the attention of all in attendance. This is Graham, Martha, Jean, and Chopper. And that's why we all need to stick together. I think. No. I know that we've all found each other for a reason. And that reason is to survive this. Damn right, Martha. I look at your faces, all of you. I see a group that isn't willing to just give the fuck up and lie down. And we won't. We all bring something to this group. All of us. Even if you can't see it right now, I do. You can fight. You can forage for food. You can help at the camp. We all have a purpose here. Please, Martha. You're ex-army. I think you've got us all beaten. The who brings something to the group department. <laughs> group laughs. These four might see them through this hell on earth. Amen to that. Gene's right, and if we can't talk our way out of it, or if we run into a horde of those things... Chopper rubs his chainsaw. Oh, then we got our insurance policy. Everywhere. Woohoo! Throwing fists into the air. Hopefully, it won't come to that. But for now, let's spread out a bit. Search this area for supplies. Make sure to stay in groups. Do not split up. And do not lose sight of your friends. We get through this by sticking together. Remember, together, together, together we, we live. live. Chopper revs his chainsaw again. <laughs> Want to cool it with that, bud? Uh, terribly sorry. Well, let's go around and round up some beans, shall we? The group starts to break up and search. Liv, Hammond, Billy, and Bo all just sort of stand there. Martha walks up to them. Hey. You guys okay? Yeah, just not really sure where to start. Well, I think we need to hit that 7-Eleven kitty corner from where we're at right now. Do you four want to take that? Uh, sure, sure, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Don't leave me out. I'm not about to stay at camp all by myself. Great. That makes Bo, Billy, and... Um... She looks at Liv, not remembering her name. I'll go with them. Great. Remember, stay together and watch each other's backs. Together we... Liv is quiet at first. Hammond steps beside her. Liv. Right. we Will do. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. You're all doing great. Also, don't think of me as the leader, in case you were, which you may not have been, which is also totally fine. We're all equals here is what I'm really trying to say. Martha leaves. But she is the leader, yeah? Come on, kid. Hammond turns to Liv. She is staring out into space. Hey, you okay? Huh? Oh, yeah, sorry. You sure? Hmm, let's see. My family and friends are all probably dead. The city is on fire and I have no idea where the hell I am. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, folks here have just been calling me Hammond. I think it's because I quoted Jurassic Park my first day here. Live. Exterior, 7-Eleven, day, present. Billy, Bo, Liv, and Hammond come out. They have lots of stuff. Liv has nothing but gummy candies. That place was loaded. I wonder why it wasn't picked over yet. Hot damn, kid. I'm just as excited as you are, but keep your voice down. Shit, sorry, I, I forgot. Most everyone has left the city already. Metropolitan areas are the absolute worst places you can be during an outbreak. Don't need to tell me that twice. I hate the city. A cowboy like you? Total surprise. Not a cowboy, darling. I'm Southern. There's a difference. Is there now? Mm, cool it. It looks like people left fast. Can't blame them. Wish we did. A lot of places got passed over in the craziness. Plus, we got a little lucky. Fuck yeah, we did. As Billy says this, he attempts to grab some of Liv's gummy candies. Liv brushes his hand aside easily. This is my stash, Billy boy. Touch them and suffer the consequences. I just wanted some sour squirms. As they continue to argue over gummy candies, we see that most of the group has already congregated in the square. They get a lot of stuff and supplies. This is amazing, and it shows what we can do if we work together. The group verbalizes their agreement. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
Correct. Yes, you're correct. Now, we need to start working our way out of the city. Find ourselves some vehicles and get the hell out of here. The group cheers. As the cheer dies down, you hear a light rumble that slowly increases in intensity. Suddenly, the glass doors to a nearby municipal building shatter, and zombies come oozing out into the streets. As this happens, windows from multiple buildings shatter, and rotting, walking corpses fall from buildings all around them. All these zombies converge at a fast speed and head towards the main group in an undead wave of terror. Don't worry. I've got this. Chopper, no! <laughs> no! Chopper revs his chainsaw, runs toward the horde, and is immediately swallowed up. All three out their guns and run toward the horde of zombies firing. They take out a few, but are overtaken almost immediately. Graham has his arms ripped off. Jean is thrown to the top of the horde and can be seen crowd surfing as her limbs are slowly ripped away. And Martha is repeatedly bitten, trampled, ripped at, and flayed. She suddenly pulls out a grenade. Eat this, you bastard! Rips off the arm holding the grenade, then tears off Martha's face. Of whatever she was going to say is lost in a sad gurgle. The entire mob of zombies moves on like a rotting wave of death swallowing all in its path. Billy, Liv, Hammond, and Bo are the only ones left. They're running far from the scene. Once they're in good, once they're a good distance away, they turn off the street into a large building. Here, oh, sad Liv, pardon me. He kneels down and picks the lock with a pocket knife, letting everyone inside. This ain't my first rodeo. After you? After you? He closes the door behind him. Everyone is out of breath. <laughs> Did you see that shit? Holy shit. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, kid, we saw it. Where did they all come from? It's New York fucking city. Where do you think they come from? Everywhere. Oh, oh my God. That was insane. What do we do now? I guess, I guess it's a good thing we were running late. Yeah, guys? A gunshot rings out and Billy's head explodes. Liv, Hammond, and Bo are sprayed with Billy's blood. Get out of my city, you fox! The three look up to see the shooter on the stairs. They run out, jumping over rubble, bodies, and debris as they race down the street, not looking back. Great! Now we're screwed! I would admit, yep, feeling kind of fucked right about now. Close up on Hammond's face as they run. Scene 4, Interior Office Day past we see hammond in a meeting daydreaming we slowly pan out to see that everyone is staring at him roberts roberts wow what are you done writing the module my next oh oh uh well uh sort of i just feel like uh, the system needs some tweaks you know i mean i mean do we have to use d6s for everything i mean it just seems a little a little simple uh, it's been done before? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say. It's not broke, don't fix it. I actually created some prototype dice I made specifically. Roberts, all you have to do is write a new adventure. That's it. Don't worry about reinventing the wheel. Just give us another story to sell. But I... People <laughs> don't want the game to... Change. People hate change. Hate it. Just use the rules that already exist and get it, don't eat. Yes, but uh, Run for Your Life is a zombie survival adventure game, right? Don't you think that we could spice things up a little? Like, what if we incorporate tabletop gaming, Roberts? No. Your name on the wall uh, over there? Anywhere? Is your name on anywhere? No, but I did write three of your best-selling adventure games, winning years best in 2014, 16, and 2018. Exactly. For story telling. Don't you see, Roberts? You're a worker bee. That's all you are, and that's all you'll ever be. <laughs> you don't make your own rules. I do. My name's on the building. You're inside of it, so you follow them. That's how it works. Now... Write the damn mod jewel that I want, or I'll find someone who will. Hammond nods numbly, and the meeting continues. Hammond looks at the dice in his hands. Phil leans over to Hammond with a smug smile. Hey, I've got a filing cabinet for those new dice of yours. Holds up a waste paper basket. Head down, pin up, bucko. 
Phil makes finger guns and insufferable pew pew noises. Scene five. Exterior. Row. Day. Present. Cut back to him and with the group. They're running. Oh, God. I ain't this far enough? This is exhausting. Wearing a hole in your cowboy boots? Yeah, just about. We have no idea how far is far enough, Tex. Last time I'm not from Texas. That's that right there, Dawn's a stereotype. Where are you from then? The group stops running to catch their breath. Long Island, Nassau. Well, I was from there, I reckon. Now I'm currently in a state of relocation. I guess we all are. Golly, as much as Martha's little sayings around my gears, I reckon we're all really are in this together. Yeah. Long Island, you said? Yes, sir. Hmm. What? That's not a Long Island accent. Damn straight, it ain't. Where are you from then? Like, originally, I mean. Florida City, Alabama. Born and raised. You're not just a passerby, you're a friend, and we're glad you came. That whole chestnut. The missus is a Long Islander through and through. So she won that battle. Really much of a battle. Wherever she goes, I follow. Where's she now? Oh shit, how much further, Ham? Bit. He speaks. Come on. The group starts running again. We need to keep moving fast and get out of the city. It's unbelievably stupid that we're still here and inconceivably lucky that we are still alive. How are you using such big words while we're running? I used to run on the weekends. Ron Christ. We need to get out of the city like yesterday. It is not a safe place to be. Yeah, I noticed. They pass a Modelo sports store as they run. Hey, Amos, should we stop and get like hockey pads or something? No time. No stopping. No more supplies. We head to the river, steal a boat, and start working our way north once we're off the island. Yeah, but we gotta go to Moe's. Don't say that. This isn't a joke. Being in the city drops our survivability by at least half. Damn. We're surrounded by potential ambushes and all this pavement means our footsteps might as well be cannon fire. We need to get out of here now. So are you the new Martha now? Lord, I hope not. Things didn't work out too well for her. The group starts running again. Oh. Sorry, just trying to keep the mood light, partner. Uh, how do you know so much anyways? I, I used to write a... Uh, M military survival guides. Well, that sounds like not the truth. They hear the sound of moans approaching. Whatever, he knows more than us. Let's get the hell out of here. They resume running. Scene 6. Exterior, Pier 84, afternoon, present. The group slowly approaches the pier, then hides behind a large cement planter. The intrepid <clears throat> aircraft carrier sits off to the right, and boats are tied up to the dock. Holy shit, is that an aircraft carrier? Long, well, you've never been to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum? No. You didn't miss much. I had to go there on a school field trip when I was a kid. Lame. It smells like old shirts. What? What? So, what? so neat of you went to the Starfleet Academy experience when it was at the Intrepid two years ago? They both stare at him in silence. Anyway, do either of you know how to operate a boat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to take my daddy's pontoon boat out on the lake every 4th of July. Let me tell you, it can be pretty dicey steering your ass around drunk patriots hollering about gun rights and grilled meats. How about that thing? Hammond points to a small express cruiser with the name Wave Tickler, embolized on its side. Wave Tickler? You've got to be kidding me. I'm not concerned about the name. If we can back it up, we have a clear shot out of here. Hell yeah, I can. I I'll tickle them waves faster than a... Don't. Don't. Whatever southern or weird homespun thing you were going to say, just don't. Sure thing, ma'am. All right, the coast looks clear. Let's just be careful. Group starts working their way across the dock towards the boat. When they're about 20 feet away from it, a voice rings out. Yar, where the hell you think you're going? Shit. They turn around to see a man in his 50s or 60s pointing a gun at them. I said, where do you think you're going? On my dock. Oh, is that boat yours? They're all mine, lady. 
And if you don't... A shot rings out and a hole appears in Stephen's <laughs> chest. Liv and Hammond slowly turn to Bo, who's holding a massive still-smoking gun. Oh. I've been using it because of the noise, but I figure we're almost there, so... Right? As the captain falls over, we begin to hear moaning, then rumbling. We then see a massive wall of the dead approaching our three from the city. Looks like you just rang the dinner bell, cowboy. Go, go, go! They all run for the boat. They get on board. Hammond starts unraveling the knots that are keeping it tied to the dock while Bo tries to get the boat started. Give me your gun, now! Never could say no to a polite request. He hands her the gun, then heads back to the boat. As she goes, she notices a nearly full plastic gas container. She grabs it and walks past Hammond, who is still untying the boat. Move! Liv swings the gas can around and tosses it at the zombie horde. The gas can flies through the air, and when it is right above the zombie, she takes aim and fires. She misses. Shit! The gas can rolls at the feet of the undead. She takes another panic shot. Misses. Try not closing your eyes when you shoot it. She takes another shot, and the gas can explodes, raining fire on the former people below it. Several of the zombies stumble and fall, slowing the horde's process. All right, gotta go, go, go! Gladly. Bo pulls the boat away from the dock. The, z- the zombies follow right in the water at different speeds and sink to the bottom. Hammond slumps to the do- to the deck. Oh my god. Holy shit, we did it. As they pass the Intrepid, they see former tourists and naval officers, now undead, straining against the railings to get at the boat going past. Some fall into the water. The rest, from a distance, look almost like a happy crowd waving from a departing cruise liner. And I have my gun back. Scene seven. The group runs the boat around somewhere up the Hudson. Where are we? Nah, yeah. We should be able to find a car somewhere around here, keep to the back roads. Then, once we're a little further upstate, we can hook up with a bigger part or highway. I gotta tell you, man. Whatever you did in a past life, I'm grateful for it. We'd all be dead if it weren't for you. Couldn't agree more. Uh huh. Uh, sure. Of course. I mean, I. Couldn't do this alone. I mean, I wish I wish I could do more. I'm no Martha. Stop. We would have had no idea where to drive or what to shoot if it weren't for you. Don too. Are you a real person? Just trying to lighten the mood, darling. Do not call me darling. Uh, oh, apologies. I guess I uh, read the room or, uh, or, or the boat wrong. It's okay. I mean, we did just go through several life or death experiences in a row. Yes, I think we can all get a cut, a considerable amount of slack. And we're all on edge. That's putting it lightly. But we're almost out of the city. Once we get off this boat, we need to find a car. Yes, nothing too big. A lot of the roads are probably still very congested this close to New York. Even the back roads? Yeah. So let's find something compact, easy to maneuver. We see the group disembark, then hit the road. They find a car relatively quickly with the key still in the ignition and blood on the windshield. We see a travel montage of them heading north, raiding rest stops, breaking open vending machines, eating whatever they can find. Liv and Hammond board up a rest stop as the sun sets. Bo scrounges for supplies behind them. Are you sure we should stop like this? It's just three of us. Shouldn't we keep going? In the car, we might stand a chance. Oh, we don't know. The street lights still work. I know it's tempting to keep moving, but, you know. You're right. Plus, resting isn't the worst idea. If we're tired, we won't think clearly, and then we'll make bad choices. I've seen enough lawyers snap when they shouldn't because of a lack of sleep. Ah, uh-huh, so you're a lawyer. Uh, yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. I bet you're a good one. What makes you say that? I don't know. I guess uh, maybe this whole apocalypse thing has me made me good at reading people. Excuse me. He awkwardly reaches past her for a hammer and some nails. You seem to know a lot about this whole apocalypse thing. Yeah, well, I'm just glad I'm being useful. Hey, uh, pass me that two by four, would you? Sure. By the way, where are we going? Good question right now north generally the further north we go the less people will see plus if things don't get better i want to be somewhere cold come winter cold zombies don't know about jackets 
And if it's cold enough, they just freeze in place. So you can either leave them or they're easy pickings until spring. At least I hope that's what they do. I haven't exactly lived to this sort of thing before. They catch each other's eye smiling. You and me both. Hey, where'd Bo go? It's starting to get dark. Damn it. Scene eight, exterior, home on Long Island, morning, past. Bo leaves his home tailed by one of his young children who doesn't want to let go. I know, buddy, but daddy's got to go to work. But you said you would play with me. <laughs> and I will tonight after work, I promise. But that's forever. You can go by real fast, I swear. But what if you forget your promise by the time you're home? I won't. What does daddy always say? Your word is your bond. And that means tonight when I'm done with work, first thing I'll do is play catch with you. Why does daddy always keep his word? Because he loves me. That's right, big guy. His younger daughter comes out on the porch. What about me, daddy? And you, princess. Leanne, his wife, stands in the doorway. She's pregnant. And me. And you. And the baby. And Sandy. And the baby. Yes, everybody. Now, daddy's got to go. Leanne leads the kids inside and then looks to her husband. Did they answer yet? No, not yet. It's been 45 doggone minutes. And the time it's taken them to answer the flipping phone, I could have driven to Manhattan and picked up the replacement screen for your freaking computer myself. <sighs> Uh, it is, it's back to school time. Um, probably the busy season. Go easy on them. It's, it's not the customer service rep's fault for the wait. Well, if I can't yell at them, who the heck am I going to yell at then? Hmm. How about nobody? Well, they shouldn't have sent you a broken screen in the first place. Then we wouldn't have, have to deal with all this with me all together. Oh. I know, I know. I'm only gashing you. I love you. I love you, too. I didn't upset the baby, did I? How's my future linebacker? Ballet dancer. Whichever. <laughs> wow. Hot dog. They answered. I see you tonight, pretty thing. He rushes into his car and turns the key. Once he's on the road, it's game on. Hello? 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 Hello, DP Computers and More. This is um, um, Scott. Can I help you? Uh, 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 hello? Sir, DP Computers, can, can you hear me? Oh, God, Christ, on crack of the spawn. Hello? Sir, I'm afraid I can't hear you. If you would like to call back, one of our agents would be happy to assist you. And... Oh, hell no. I've been on hold for a godforsaken hour trying to get a hold of you people. And yesterday I was on hold for double that. So you better not hang up on me or you're going to have one hell of a problem. We see now the person he's speaking to is Scott in a phone room in an office building in Manhattan. I'm um, sorry, I- uh, Yeah, I'm pass sorry, me to a manager. But sir, I can assist you. It's just that your phone yeah, is- Yeah, I want to speak to a manager now. Uh, but I didn't do anything and I- I... No, I I swear to God, if you don't pass me to a manager right now- Okay, one second, sir. Um, Let me call over to tech support. Uh, one second. Wait, no, no, wait a second. That, that isn't what I wanted. Yeah. God damn it. Scott dials a number. A phone elsewhere in the office rings. Max picks up. Uh, tech support. It's me. Oh, hey. Got another live wire. Ah, shit. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put him on hold for a while until he cools down or he hangs up. Cool. Sup? Nah, not too much. Just uh, working on the back end of the software use we use for ordering. Riveting. <laughs> Ooh, you know it. The uh, boss is on my butt about it. Isn't she always? Yeah, yeah. She uh, needs to look busy to cover up the fact that she has no idea how to do any of our jobs. I feel that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is he, um, is he off the line? Oh, not, not yet. Um, why the heck do we still work here? I don't know. It's a paycheck. I mean, albeit not a good one. Yeah, no, I mean, I've been here for a long time and here I've been in here even longer. Don't you ever want to change a scene? I mean, sometimes, but then I'd have to get my pop figurine situated at a new desk, and who has that kind of time? Is he, uh, is he still there? Yep. Oh. You know, these are the kind of people I, I really hate. These people who think they can be shitty as they want on the phone because 
they talk a big game, big game when hidden behind technology. But in person, if you ever wanted to call them on it, they 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 would crumble. You think so? I know so. I bet money on it. If I had any. Well, you know, uh, you could just hang up on them. You have that kind of power. <laughs> I have no power. Now look, hey, he's being a an asshole. Like you said, that's reason enough. I mean, just say you were disconnected. Oh, you've got a point. One second. Right. He presses a button. In his car, Bo gets a dial tone and smacks his hand on the wheel. God damn it. Back at the office. <laughs> that felt good. Yeah, I can tell. Uh, so, when you want to get lunch? A low rumbling from outside. What sounds like an explosion. The lights flicker. You feel that? Yeah. The sound of muffled screams from outside. In a split screen, both Max and Scott get up from their desks, work forgotten, and look out their respective windows in awe at what is happening outside. Scene 9. Exterior road. Day. Present. Scott and Max, standing on an abandoned street, stare at their reflections in the car window. After a moment, they look around. Debris, body, and abandoned vehicles are scattered. Try this one. On it. Max, using some everyday item, pries the door open and begins to look everywhere inside. See anything? Uh, nope. Looks like the poor sap took it with him. Uh, give me a second. Max starts trying to hotwire the car. Oh, fuck that! Scott begins looking around the street, picking the pockets of the deceased. No emotion. She always pokes them with her gun or kicks them first. Hey, you should be more careful. Don't tell me what to do. I have the gun. All right, fair point, but uh, I bet you I get this thing going before you find any keys. I'll take that bet. It is a fool's bet. I'm a fool, then. Yup. Fool with a gun. Uh, yeah, you know, you keep bringing that up. I just want you to forget who's calling the shots here. Uh, like you would ever let me. That's what I'm here for. Oh. How many days has it been anyway? I don't, know, I don't know. Time kind of bleeds together nowadays. Favorite comedy? Oh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Now, how is that a comedy? Don't you think it should be now that we have a little perspective here? Touche. Scott finds the keys, and at the same time, Max gets the car going. Found him! Damn it! Told you. She approaches him, chucks a few of their belongings in the back of the van. Never doubt me again. Max rolls his eyes, moaning from behind them. They turn to see several zombies approach. Is it just me? Or do they seem slower? Must be spoiling. <laughs> Come on! A Bob Dylan song plays. Slow motion. Max emerges from the driver's side and pulls a battle mace from his back and a machete from his hip sheath. Scott emerges at the same time from her side of the van with a rock pick in her right hand and a buckler strapped to her left forearm. Scott's gun is tucked into the belt of her jeans. Shooting is loud and attracts more zombies. No false moves here. They turn to face the approaching undead. Good. I was getting bored. Max spits out a toothpick. I don't want that now, would we? <laughs> this is gonna be fun! Max steps forward calmly to meet the zombies, and Scott rushes ahead with a manic grin on her face. Scott bashes the first one in the chest with her buckler, then smashes in its soft cranium with her rock pick. As she pulls, out a gu as she pulls it out, a geyser of gore follows. Max walks past her as this happens and gets sprayed with Iker. <sighs> that was such a dick thing to do. Can't be one if you don't have one. Max swings his mace in a graceful upward strike at an approaching zombie, sending its head flying. Another zombie is about to sneak up on him from behind, but Scott throws her shield at it and nearly cuts it in half. Max, without looking, swings his machete behind him and decapitates it. That one was technically mine! Yeah, but I killed it. We are not having a Legolas Gimli-style argument right now! Scott rips her shield from the stumbling undead, embeds her rock pick into the chin of another approaching zombie, then hunkers down and holds her shield up at an angle. Max runs up to the shield, jumps, then comes down hard with his mace on the final zombie's head, which explodes like a blood melon. After the fight, they stand still, together, covered in blood and breathless. Silent. You can say it. <sighs> okay, I take it back. Stopping by that museum was not the worst idea. You're welcome. I did not say thank you. You are so welcome. <laughs> Knock it off. You know, we are, we are getting good at that. Just as they hear a voice from behind them, a group of four muscular men approach. Now that was really something. Color me impressed. Wasn't that something, Ray? Oh, hell yeah. Really something. Bit of a car, man. Adirondacks, here we come. <laughs> Where'd you get that sweet bat? It's a mace. Shut up, Max. 
Oh, she's got a mouth on her, doesn't she, boys? Hell yeah, boys. Hell yeah, she does. A real purdy mouth at that. Touch me and I'll chop your fucking dick off. Oh, not so fast. The young men all draw guns. Scott fires the urge to draw hers, keeping it concealed. Drop them. They hesitate. You deaf? Drop them. Slowly they do. That's it. Nice and easy. There we go. That wasn't so tough, now was it? Hey. Thanks, bro. Much obliged, sweet cheeks. Kisses Scott, and when he pulls back, she swiftly backhands him. All hell breaks loose as Scott jumps on the guy, pins him down, then punches him repeatedly and brutally. Jackasses two and four point their guns at her. Hey, 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 quit it, quit it. You want to get shot, sweet cheeks? Because this is how you get shot. Jackass one laughs. Scott stops her attack and holds her arms up. Max goes to do something about it. Oh, Max. Yeah, don't, Max. Trev. You got your ass beat by a girl. (laughs) Fuck up. Now that Scott has guns pointed at her, it's easier for Jackass 3 to retaliate, which he does by hitting her hard with the butt of one of the weapons. She falls. She's bleeding. But there's straight up murder in her eyes. Kill him? Nah. Waste of a bullet. We will, however, take your car. Thanks so much. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. (laughs) Shut up, Ray! But I thought we were saying... Stop! That. Stop thinking. You're bad at it. Jackass 1 gets very close to Jackass 2. Don't talk. Don't talk for the rest of the goddamn day. Shit, you're getting on my nerves, Ray. Now go get in the van. Jackass 2 goes ahead, shoulders slumped, and climbs into the back seat. You two stay right there. I'm feeling charitable, so I won't kill you. But if I ever see you again, I will. And I'll enjoy it. Jackass 1 licks his lips at Max and Scott. It's unsettling. The group of jackasses then climbs into the van and drives off. Jackass 4 waves Max's mace out the window. Adirondacks, here we come! (laughs) You okay? Change of plans. Scene 10. Interior. Car on the road. Day. Past. Bo speeds in his car, past all the madness happening outside. He turns onto his street, running over the curb. The same one we saw earlier. People are running. A fire hydrant spews water. Please be okay. Please be okay. Please be okay. Please be okay. He pulls up into his driveway and hurries out of his vehicle. A car alarm is going off. He runs up the porch steps and sees the door already open. He bursts inside and notices everything is a mess. Behind him, a blood streak across the wall goes unnoticed. Liam? Jamie? Jess? He hears the sound of rumbling behind a closed door and approaches. Where? Bo opens the door and an infected man rushes out, tackling him. Things crash all around them as Bo wrestles him down. He blindly feels about until he manages to pull a rung off the knockdown chair. Using the sharp edge, he stabs the man on top of him in the eye, who gargles and then falls over dead. Pushing the body off him and pulling out the makeshift spike, Bo races upstairs, now in a panic. Leanne? Kids? Leanne? You hear something again. This time he slowly opens the door to the bedroom with the spike at the ready. His eyes widen. We don't see anything, but we do hear the sounds of what sound like two little mouths grunting and moaning as they eat. Scene 11. Exterior. Around the rest stop. Early evening. Present. Bo is staring at a car in the parking lot at the rest stop. As we pan over, we can see that there are two dead children in the back seat. They both have bullet holes in their heads. And when we pan up the, to the front seat, we hear their, we see their parents, who have also been shot. The mother in the driver's seat is still lightly clutching a gun. Bo looks at the dead mom. Lucky. Bo scans the parking lot for likely lo- looting targets, but his gaze settles on something a ways off in the woods. I'll be damned. Little fucking Debbie. Bo works his way towards a little Debbie snack truck that has crashed in the woods. Well, hello, beautiful. You got some uh, shitty snacks for me? I hope so. I could go for some good old-fashioned man-made clog your insides quality garbage. He tries to open the back of the truck. It's locked. Well, nothing good old Mr. Goodbar can't handle. Bo cranks at the door with the crowbar he produces from his backpack and it pops open. Little Debbie nutty bars pour out of him onto him in a torrent along with a moaning zombie. 
Oh shit, no, god, god damn it. The zombie lands on Bo and snaps at his face as they both ah. continually pelted with nutty, nutty boxes. Just then... Four. A mysterious man in goggles, a jean jacket, and a bandana over his face struts out of the woods and takes a swing at the zombie with a golf club. It, its head severs completely, flying through the air, and Bo is soaked with zombie blood. Well, look at that. You got a little on you there. Here, let me help you up. Oh shit, hold on, there's more in the truck. The man hops into the truck, where struggling can be heard. Bo eventually manages to wrestle the corpse off himself. Nope, sorry, out you go. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, you fucks. Zombies fly from the back of the truck, and Patty is close behind. He brains each of them with his club as they try to stand. He removes the bandana from his face when he's done and approaches Bo. Oh, oh damn, uh, uh, thanks. Uh... Patty, nice to meet you. Patty gives Bo a hearty, unafraid handshake. Patty. Oh, just Patty. I can't imagine the last name is me and anything right now. Uh, I suppose not. Uh, Bo. Pleased to meet you, Patty, and thanks for saving my damn life. Don't mention it. Say, you gonna eat all those nutty buddies? Well, I think I'll put a dent in them, but help yourself. <laughs> Brilliant. You out here yourself, mate? Then, no, no, I've got some friends back at the rest stop. Uh, no shit. Mind if I join you? Sorry if I'm coming on a little strong. I haven't seen another living person in like two weeks, and I'm kind of used to being around people all the time, you know? Well, you did just save my life. Where are you headed? North, generally. No plan, huh? Can't say I blame you. That's the way I like to ride myself. Say, did you hear there's a military base in the Adirondacks? Taking people in. I got the coordinates. Whoa. Whoa. Where did you get the coordinates? We're a prize in a cereal box. Really? No, you arse. I heard them on the radio. Christ, how the fuck are you still alive? Just lucky, I guess. Uh, let's grab some nutties and get the hell out of Dodge. I, I wanted to introduce you to him and Liv. Scene 12. A Bob Dylan song plays. Interior, various houses. Day, montage. We see the group post-meeting, raiding various houses in slow motion, taking down the undead. They're getting better at it, somewhat. Particularly Liv, who is becoming a better shot. At one house, she finds more bullets stashed away in a closet. Hammond finds canned goods and quickly throws them in his bag. In a drawer, Patty and Bo find nudie magazines. They give each other a look of silent understanding and then stuff them in their bags. Another house. Another free-for-all. This time, Patty and Bo charge in. Bo stabs a zombie in the head with a butcher knife while Patty swings his golf club at another while standing on a kitchen island. The gang raids the house, too. Patty and Bo open a liquor cabinet and find a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of tequila. They give each each other a look of silent understanding and then stuff those into their bags. Elsewhere in the kitchen, Liv approaches Hammond and holds up a wet cloth to wipe some blood off his face. Hey, you got a little something on you. Oh, well, thanks. I never would have noticed. I can't, I can't remember the last time I've looked in a mirror. You look good. Yeah? Except for the blood. Thank you. That's nice. Uh, that was uh, nice of you to say. <laughs> You're really struggling with that one, huh? Yeah, it, it's been a while since I've act, I've had to say something nice to someone. Uh huh. They stare at each other for a moment. Liv leaves. Hammond stands there with a blank look on his face. Wait, what? Scene thirteen. Interior car afternoon. The group is crammed into their compact car with all the loot that they've collected. Hammond is driving. Liv is in the front seat. Bo and Patty are in the back seat. Bo and Patty are eating Nutty Buddies. I think I'm sick of nutty buddies. No one says you have to keep eating them. I don't know. I feel I feel obligated. Uh, mate, I can find a use room. Hey. Hold on. What if I want nut pals? Nutty buddies. Nutty buddies. <laughs> nut pals sounds gross. Hey. Jesus, you two are obsessed with those awful things. More like it's the only good thing we've gotten our paws on in the longest. Yeah, whatever you say. Don't sass your elders, kid. Okay, Dad. Oh, don't call me that. And don't act like one. No, maybe I can't help it. Even so. Hey! What? 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 Bunch of the dashboard lights just jumped on. Which ones? I think all of them. 
Car starts to chug, then slowly rolls to a stop. They all get out of the car. Hammond pops the hood, and Bo takes a look. Mm-hmm. I think it's the alternator. Who here speaks car? Well, let me translate it for you, doll. We're fucked. Can we fix it or replace it or something? Well, I think it's safe to say that we're probably not going to find an alternator for a 2004 Pontiac G6 and, well, wherever the hell we are now. For fuck's sake, is nothing going to go our way? Everybody grab a sack. It looks like we're walking from here. Everyone in the group grabs a backpack and fills it with supplies. They start walking. So we're walking to the Adirondacks. We just need to find a new car. You know, it's odd. I actually haven't seen a car in a long time. Besides ours, I mean. Shouldn't we be worried? Yeah, where the fuck are all the crashed cars? Every zombie movie I've ever seen has crashed cars all over the road, but this highway is empty as a church during happy hour. And mm. house with the fox in it? My head during a mass test. Joey Chestnut stomach before a hot dog eating contest? You both should stop. Just please stop. No one wins this. Hey, uh, guys, I think a car is coming. Actually, mate, that looks like a van. Driver's side window goes down. Jack S1 leans out the window and leers at the group. Well, hey there. Looks like you bunch are in a bit of a jam, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, you got room in there? Window behind the driver's side rolls down, and we can see the other jackasses grinning. <laughs> Go ahead, throw your stuff in the trunk, then climb on in. Plenty of room in the back. Oh, 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 wait, wait, hold on. I thought we, uh... Ray, I swear to God, Ray. But, but I'm just... Ray, shut up! Ray, Ray, just shut, shut up. You need to not talk, but instead, shut up. I don't think this is a good idea. What other choice do we have? To just walk. The group throws their stuff into the trunk of the van, then piles into the back. So, where are y'all going? Well, the plan was to go to the Adiron... All four jackasses point guns at the group. What did I say? Okay, y'all got a choice. Hey, yeah, you can die, or you can die. Shut up. Ray! Suddenly, the front doors of the van are thrown open and Jackasses 1 or 4 are dragged out of the van by two road warriors. It's Scott and Max. Shit. Oh, oh shit. I said we should have killed them. I said it. I said it. That. The two Jackasses who are still in the van are struggling with their seatbelts. Max and Scott begin to beat the other two up mercilessly. Max impedes his mace in the chest of Jackass 1 as the other one gets up and runs. Scott throws her rock pick, which embeds in his back. As he whimpers, she, Stoneface, uses her hand to bash his face into the pavement. Once he's out, she jams the rock pick into the back of his head. As the two jackasses get out of the van, Max and Scott pull their weapons out with no forgiveness or empathy. They turn to fight the other two, but they run off into the woods. Oh, what's the matter? Get your asses back here! Yeah, that'll show them. Men. Not you, of course. Oh, well, I figured. Mm. Scott and Max high five, then strut towards the van. Max takes shotgun and Scott rips open the back door, face streaked with blood. So, who's driving? Uh, me? Max, front seat. You all move the fuck over. I'm already in the front seat. Okay. Scene 14, interior bar, late evening. Hammond sits at a bar opposite of a young woman in a pretty dress. It's evident that they've both been drinking. No, no, no. You see, it's, you see, it's like being the author who is... Uh, who, who is also writing a choose your own adventure book, but you don't get to choose the ending. Someone you don't know does. And sometimes they ignore everything you write and just do whatever the hell they want. Uh, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> Hand my work over to someone else. I mean, my editor hates me. I question every change she tries to make. Well, it's different. You write like books, books, like novels. What, what I write is essentially the... Manual. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Manual is a bad way to put it. My bad. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's just the only thing I could think to compare it to. Yeah, I know. It's cool. I mean, it's not like you're wrong. <clears throat> I think it's really cool. It's a totally different kind of writing. I could never do it. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, I guess you think I'm kind of a nerd now, huh? 
well, yes, you're a total nerd. <laughs> but that's why I agreed to come here in the first place. We'll see about that. Okay, never have I ever. <clears throat> oh, okay, back to the game. <clears throat> you're relentless. Like you read about. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, never have I ever gone out on an okay Cupid date with the first person. Use a line from Spider Man to pick me up. That's so unfair. <laughs> with great profile photos. Comes great responsibility. Okay. Well, you're drinking. Mm hmm. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, never have I ever written a role-playing game. That seems unfair. Drink. Okay, never have I ever asked for a second date while I was still on the first one. Really? Yeah. Is this you choosing your own ending? It looks like it. <laughs> scene 15 interior van day we cut to him in space as he drives the van max is in the passenger seats navigating Bo, Liv, and patty in the back it's awkwardly silent until oh i've got an idea let's play a game never have i ever been born in the states all right you go okay i'll go again thanks so much never have i ever nearly been killed trying to get a nutty buddy Okay. Uh, I guess someone doesn't want to admit that one. Okay, okay, my go. Never have I ever killed two men and taken their vehicle. Oh, that's you two, eh? Hey? No. That was savage back there, wasn't it? You two really showed those shites what was. It was fucking grand. Hell, I don't know about you, but when all this is said and done, the first thing I'm going to do is head to the pub with the boys and get buckled. Oh, shit, I'm being rude, am I? I'm Patty. Over here is Bo. This is... Shh. Up front on the wheel is Ham, but I honestly doubt that's his real name, if you ask me. He honestly looks more like a, a Richard or a Brad or a Ryan or... Will you shut up? Sure thing. Touchy, isn't she? God turns around and holding a gun addresses the group. Here's the deal. You're going to drive us to the end of the road, then we're going to kick you out, and then we're going to take our van and our supplies back. It's not your van. <laughs> Actually, it is. Uh, those assholes took it. I did that to them. Awful lot of smart asses in this car. Scott aims the gun at Bo. Yeah, we got it back. Finders keepers. Uh, you know, I wouldn't piss her off. She's had a bad day. <laughs> the worst. You can't take the van, you can't. Then we'll be stranded and we'll have nowhere to go. Boo fucking who? We'll be sitting ducks, we'll be screwed. You can't do this. Easy live. No, I won't let them, I won't. Hey, will you keep her quiet? I can't focus. You can't. I won't let you. <laughs> I won't. I won't. You got it. Scott aims the gun at her head. Just then Hammond steps on the gas and they speed up. What the fuck is this? What are you doing? Why are you letting him do this? I'm not letting him do anything. Calm down. Don't put the gun in her face. Slow down. Now everyone just relax. What is he doing? I don't know. Slow down now. Put the gun down or I'll run us off the road. Are you fucking crazy? Well, g g g g give me the wheel. They struggle. Hammond manages to hit Max in the face. <laughs> Put their goddamn gun down right now. Fucking crazy. Holy fucking balls, man. We'll be sitting ducks. Get the gun out of her face. Pull over or I'll shoot her. Oh, she will do it, man. <laughs> do it. You saw what they did to them. Put it down. The same time to play chicken ham. Emin steps on the brake suddenly. Everyone is stunned, even him. She has the cure. Come again? She has the cure in her blood. Do you think we were born yesterday? Are you honestly trying to pull the plot of 28 weeks later on us or 28 days? Are you fucking serious? It's true. All right, why should we believe you? Why shouldn't we believe him? What? You heard me. Think about it. Sure, maybe he's lying. Not helpful. But maybe he's not. And if he's not, and live here is the cure, and you kill her and kick us all out or whatever, you doom an entire human race. That's a lot to have on you, isn't it? You think I give two shits about anyone? <laughs> this is stupid. You, you, all of you are all stupid. This whole fucking thing is stupid. Have you noticed? 
These are the last days, you shit. The dead are rising from the graves. The sky is fucking falling. As I looked, and as he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became as black as sackcloth. And the moon became as blood. Revelations 7.12. That shit is from Ghostbusters! Oh. The party not this one, huh? All right, all right. Ghostbusters or not, Scott, I agree with them. Look, this is a low-risk, high-reward situation. Plus, I mean, the entire world is turned upside down. I mean, maybe she is the cure. And what if she's not? We waste our time. Yeah, what if she is? You can't be that stupid. Quite the opposite. I think you know that. I'm doubting it big time right now. Oh, you don't doubt all you want, but I'm in. And you're directionally challenged, so unless you want to spend months wandering around Jersey, I suggest you come with. Uh, 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 fine, fine. But I swear, if any of you get in my way, or I find out that you're lying... Scott puts what? away her gun, and everyone sighs in relief as Hammond starts driving again. Silence. What? Huh? You'll what? Patty. Shut the fuck up, dude. Okay, so never have I ever. Oh my god, oh, <laughs> kill me! 1516. Exterior, outside, street. Max stands in the parking lot watching over folks in the car while Scott leads Bo and Patty down the street. Keep an eye on them. I know. What else am I going to do out here? Liv looks at Hammond through the rear view, trying not to look suspicious. What the hell was that? What? Are you crazy? Lately, I feel like it. You know what I mean? The cure? Are you nuts? It was all that I could come up with in the moment. Next time, come up with something better. Easy for you to say. You were in the back there just screaming your head off about to get, our, about to get yourself shot. Someone had to do something. Oh, and I needed some big, strong man to keep me safe. Is that it? No, I... I mean... What's with you wanting to play action hero all of a sudden? Where did that come from? Not. I mean... I don't know where it's coming from. Christ, get off my back. I was just trying to help. Next time, if I want your help, I'll ask for it. Fine. Fine. Hey, keep it down in there. Quiet for a moment, she can't help herself. What's your plan for when they figure out you lied to them, huh? I haven't that that far ahead, to be honest. I figured. Yeah, well... Yeah, we'll all be in trouble. I know. All of us. Then we better make sure they don't find out then, huh? Listen, I'm sorry, but it was either that or you, or getting you killed, and I didn't feel like seeing anyone else die in front of me if I could help it. Okay, what now? We go to the Adirondacks. It wouldn't hurt to have a bit more manpower, person power on the way up there. And you've already seen what these two can do. We bide our time. Act now, ask questions later. Right. I hope it works. You and me both. You see Patty, Bo, and Scott further down the street proceeding cautiously, surveying the layout. Big creepy, isn't it? How fucking quiet it all is. I hate the quiet, I really do. I got in tons of trouble because I could never keep my mouth shut. My man wanted to kill me. Want to kill you. I want to kill you. Nah, nah, Patty's right. Quiet's one thing, but this here's real quiet. No people, no birds, no moans, no sounds. Nothing. It's like when you're in the woods and a cougar's stuck in your ass. Scott notices the same. Steps in front of them, going a bit off the road. Gun at the ready, leaving the two boys behind her. A bit mad, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The roof ain't nailed tight. Kind of a fan, though. Bo rolls his eyes and nearly bumps into Scott. She's looking at something. His eyes follow, and now the boys both see a warehouse. Scene 17, interior warehouse, early evening. Would you look at that? This place has got to be loaded. Yeah, it still looks pretty fresh. You, the um, the, uh, Irish guy, you, you go get everyone else. We're going in and we'll need all your asses here to get as much crap as we can. Aye, aye, boss lady. Scott raises her brow, seeming to like that. Patty goes off to fetch the rest of the group. We cut to all of them about to enter the warehouse. Okay, we're going to split up. Well, actually... You did not just... <laughs> well, actually me. Uh, 
I don't recommend it. It goes poorly even when she doesn't have a gun. Let me finish, okay? What's with men and not letting women finish? Like, like, ever. I do. Shut up, dude! You, oh, God, look at the Irish. Fuck, you're coming with me. Max, take Cowboy Casty and, uh... Live. Uh, we'll see. Try not to get killed, okay? I'm really not in the mood today. Fine, fine. Uh, minimal death. Got it. Mm-hmm. Two groups head into the warehouse and split up. Wow. Look at that. I bet this was a grocery distrib- distributor or something. Jackpot. All right, uh, let's talk more take. The longer we're in here, the more danger we're in. Uh, too many corners. They begin to stuff their bags full of canned goods. We find the other group doing the same. So, lady, what's up with you and that chip on your shoulder? Eddie, maybe don't try to befriend the person who almost killed us. Chip on my shoulder, mate? You mean the chip that's kept me alive so far, or the one that killed those assholes who were about to kill you, huh? Hmm? I mean, you know one. I don't know. I think I got it when the world ended, probably. When did you get the urge to start asking people stupid questions? I think before the world ended, actually. Cut back to the other group. What do you think is in here? Liv is heading towards what looks like a freezer. Bo slips in front of her protectively. Thanks, Dad. What did I say about calling me that? Slowly opens the door, Max notices. Uh, wait, actually, I don't think that's, uh... A single zombie stumbles out. It's about to grab Liv when Bo gets in his way. Liv, watch out! Bo jumps in front of the zombie and grabs it, but it's covered in blood and he can't keep his grip. The zombie gets in close and its teeth sink into Bo's neck. Uh, Bo! Ah! God damn it! Max thrusts his machete into the zombie's head and it collapses. Bo stands there, shocked losing a ton of blood. He sees flashes of his wife, Leanne, his kids, moments before this one. They're alive and well. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I, I, I just need something to patch myself up. <laughs> Flashback, exterior, afternoon, outside of Bo's house. Bo runs outside and vomits. Oh, oh God. Oh, God, no. Bo collapses onto his lawn and weeps. Interior, warehouse, back to the present. Bo collapses and Liv catches him. Max gets on the radio. Bo, are you okay? Yeah, sweetheart, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just a bit lightheaded, though. Someone get me something for his neck. Uh, Scott, get your ass up here. You're going to be okay. Oh, I feel like shit. Fine, you're okay. Just keep breathing, okay? Oh, don't lie to me now, sweetheart. I'm not, promise. Don't make me laugh, Dad. Mm, what did I say about calling me that? Scott rushes in. Uh, Bo, Bo got bit. Oh, fuck! What happened? Bo got bit! Bo got How? How folks normally get bit, I guess? Yes, bad luck. Mm, I'm, I'm gonna turn, aren't I? Y- y- yes. No! Mm, how long? Stop. We don't know for sure. Um, except that we do. No, don't listen to them. I, I do. Okay, okay. All right, okay. All right, well, in that case, one of you guys should probably... Uh... <sighs> Shit, I'm no good at this. Just, uh... Just do what I could. What do you mean? Day one. I couldn't bring myself to do it. You do it. Please, Liv. Please don't. You'll be okay. Do what I couldn't. No, listen to me. You'll be okay, Bo. You'll just... God strides forward and shoots him in the head. The group is stunned. What the fuck did you just do? What she had to. He wasn't turned yet. We need to board up the windows and doors here or uh, we'll be in trouble. He walks off. Everyone is horrified. Scene 18, interior warehouse room. Scott is shoved hard into some lockers with a loud clang by Hammond, who rips the gun out of her hand. Liv steps in front of Max, blocking him. Hey, lay off of her. Get back. Like hell, you saw what she did. I did what had to be done. You killed a man. He wasn't a man. He not anymore. God, you okay? No, she's not okay. She's never been fucking okay. I said stay back. Shot Bo, you killed our friend. No, 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 I killed one of those things. He would have come back, they always Scott, do. 
up. I know it. You know it. You all fucking know it. You shut the fuck up. You all want to stand here and play innocent and friends forever, but that's not how it fucking works anymore. The world doesn't work like that anymore. The rules have changed. You better stop acting like it now or you'll be as dead as your idiot friend. And then punches her in the face. She oh. Punches again. Oh, you punched a girl, man. Not cool. Scott w w wipes at her face from the floor and smirks, gets to her feet, <laughs> and out of nowhere punches Hammond. Chaos erupts as the groups try to pull everyone away from everyone. Then the group is split. Liv Hammond on one side, Max Scott on the other with Patty between them. You're all just playing stupid because none of you wants to be the bad guy. But there's no bad guy anymore. There's no rules. There's no moral compass. There's nothing. Now there's folks who are smart enough to survive and those who aren't. Which one are you? Hey, are you okay? Give me my gun back. Like hell he will. You're a fucking lunatic. Oh, good insult. Who the fuck cares? You think you're the first person to call me that? Maybe take it as a hint. So what? I'm still alive, aren't I? Hell, because of me, you're still alive. Us. And don't flatter yourself. That's not flattery. That's the goddamn truth. Give me my gun back. Just give it back, man. Does anything. We're all as good as dead. She walks away and plops down, pouting on the far side of the room. Scene 19, interior warehouse, evening. Max is sorting through some of the loot they acquired before Bo got bit. He's approached by Liv. Hey, Max, right? Yep. Can I ask you something? Uh, shoot. Bad choice of words, man. I, sorry, um, fire away. Seriously? I, I'm sorry, I'm, look, I'm not great with these things. Just ask away. Why are you with that woman? She's insane. She's, she's not insane. Listen, man, before, way back before everything went to hell, I dealt with all sorts of bad people. I know one when I see one. She's a bad person. All right, whatever you say. She'll turn on you the moment it's not convenient to keep you around. Uh, no, she won't. She's my friend. Yes, she will. I, look, we used to work together before everything went down the tubes. I know her better than anyone. Everyone else at that crappy job was awful. We kept each other sane. Looks like you didn't keep up your end of the deal. Huh. Does that make you feel better? We stuck together through shit before all of this and that's what we're gonna do now. It's not my fault you keep getting on her bad side and I can't help if I'm on her good one. He killed someone. Yeah, your friend who was bit, who would have turned. Look, I think, I think deep down you know that. And when he did, did you want to be the one to put him... Stop. Well, look, I'm just, I'm just saying, she'll do things that I won't, and I can do things that she can't. We've got each other's backs. We'll see about that. Look, I would be fucked without her, and so would you. Do you think she feels the same way about you? Hmm. hmm. Do you want a beer? Yes. Liv sits down next to Matt, who pulls out a couple of warm Miller High Lifes. Exterior, roof, evening. Patty approaches Scott, who is by herself sitting on the roof. You come here to yell at me too? Because I don't really want to hear it. I'm tired. Nah, I haven't. Felt like you had enough already. Just wanted to check up on you. Check on me? Do I look like someone who needs checking up on? No, trust me, no. But I felt the urge to regardless, and I always follow on what my gut tells me to do. Me too. I'm that kind of bloke. I figured. I know it's tough to pin me down. I'm a subtle guy. <laughs> As am I. Um, am I a monster? I think so. Because I don't, I don't feel like one. Okay. Because I'm not. All right. I have to turn the part of that my brain off, you know? Yeah. The part that's screaming that I shouldn't be like this. Yeah. That I'm a good person deep down. Right. I am a good person. You are. I was. You are. I was the best person. I bet. But I'm someone who doesn't want to die. Yeah. I don't deserve to die. Who does? Wait. What? You said I was a good person. Fuck, I guess I did. Even though all I've done is yell at you? I reckon sometimes I need to get yelled at. I killed your friend. That's blunt, and yes, you did. 
You should hate me. I should I should do a lot of things. Well then do something about it. He gives her a hug. It's sudden but sincere. Wow. I'm a good hugger. No, it's um it's just been a while since I've had one of those. Me too. I don't know what to do. It's okay not to do anything. He lets her go. I'm not crazy. Yeah, you are. But so am I. So let's get out of here. And then do what? Ice skate? Give me an hour. If you hate it, you don't ever have to talk to me ever again. Is that a promise? Scout's on her. Scene 20. Interior home, evening. Scott and Patty in slow motion open the door to a home holding weapons. Meanwhile, Hammond, asleep in bed, realizes the flap of his tent has been opened. We see Max on the roof, forlorn. He does a crossword. Hammond lifts his gun, ready to shoot. An entire zombie zombie family looks up at him at the disur- at, looks up at the disturbance of Scott and Patty. They start to make their way towards them. Father, mother, two kids. Scott and Patty step forward with the eagerness of a video game. Hammond realizes it's Liv. She kisses him slowly at first, then deepens it. They both get in. Cut to Patty and Scott viciously battling this family. One by one, they are slain until Scott and Patty are bloodied, looking at each other, smiling, breathless. It's their version of sex. All while Hammond and Liv actually do the deed. Max looks up at the sky, then back to his puzzle. Patty grins at Scott. I'm a monster. <laughs> me too, I reckon. You don't want to fix me? Nah, that's too much work, man. <laughs> Scene 21. Interior, bar, evening, past. Patty stands behind a bar, wiping down the countertop. Drunks surround him on the opposite end of the counter. He hates it. Give me another PBR over here, Patty. Put it on my tab. Huh? Another PBR. Put it on the tab. Yeah, sure, of course. What's got you distracted tonight, Patty? Not another planet. Sorry, uh, coming right up. Put it on your tab. He's the bartender genius. He doesn't have a tab. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, put it on. Uh... He passes out. Hey, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Fuck sake. Mark, you have to buy me a drink. Mark, P- Patty pounds the bar in front of Mark. Oi, fucko, wake up, you drunk. Uh, uh, put, put it on Mark's tab. Later, Mark. Okay, that's enough. Both of you, out. You're done. Patty comes out from behind the bar and starts shoving the two towards the door. What about my drinks? No more drinks. I already called you a cab. A tab? Are you too Abbott and fucking Costello? Listen, I'm going to say this because I know you're not going to remember and we're just going to repeat this whole stupid cycle tomorrow night like we always do. I hate this. All of this. I hate you, at least right now. As a matter of fact, if the wor- fucking world was fucking ended and you two fuckers died and this bar burned down, I'd be a happy man. That's not nice to say. Fuck off. Patty goes back inside. Scene 22. Exterior. Campsite. Early morning. Present. Patty and Scott sneak back to the campsite. They part ways with a hearty handshake. At the same time, Liv leaves Hammond's tent. Her and Scott bump into each other. Oh! oh. Christ! Ugh. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't. I my bad. Sorry. Um, sorry. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, so you... Um... Oh. Yeah. Good for you. Really? Yeah, you have some spark in you. Thanks. Uh Uh-huh. Sure. Thanks. Just getting back? Yeah. Have fun? Jury's still out. That's fair. Yeah, um... Uh... You? Uh... How about you? Uh, jury's still out on, uh, that one. Okay. Uh, Me neither. Touche. Um... Listen, I, I'm not so good at this, so. Okay, uh, cool. Me neither. Cool, cool. Then let's not, let's just not do this. Sounds good to me. Okay, good, good for you, though. Really good. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Later that day, Scott's radio fizzles, and then a voice. Live in Hammond, hear it. Hello. Hello? We're, we're here if anyone can hear us. Head north. We have food, water, Be prepared to show identification. 
We hope to hear from you. That sounds serious. Yeah. Or it's a trap. Possible. What now then? We go north. We're already going towards the Adirondacks. Isn't that north enough? Okay then, stay the course. Stay the course. Right then, we head north. In 23, interior van, afternoon, present. A car is suddenly rocked as a tire goes flat. Hammond ooh, struggles ooh. briefly, but then gets the van under control and stops. Uh, what did we hit? I don't know. I think the tire just popped. Oh, on brand. You got a spare? Well, I hope so. I think I saw one. There is in the trunk. Anyone know how to change a tire? We're all from the city. Of course we don't. Uh, actually, I think I can. Since when? I moved to New York when I was 25. I've owned a car before. Wow, you learn something new every day. Um, let's get to it then. All right, I'll help. The group gets out to change the tire. Max, take a look at the tire. Patty, you come with me. Okay, uh, don't get too excited. We're just gonna check the perimeter. Liv, you watch these other two. Me? Yeah, why not? You're... you're you're getting it to a real softy now. Shut up, dude. Gott and Patty go out a little further. Max starts to work on the tire with Hammond. Liv climbs on top of the car to keep an eye out. After a moment, her eyes widen. Shit. Shit! What? Max peers around the tire and his eyes widen. Shit! Runners! We got runners! He picks up the speed with the tire. Hammond helps. Uh, how's the tire looking, you two? <clears throat> getting there? Get there faster! Not helping. We can now see the runners. There are four of them, and they're fast. Patty and Scott run to meet them. It's a flurry of battle. The zombies are picked off. Max gets up to help them. Ugh. Uh, get the car started. But I... It's now or never. Max joins in the fight while Liv jumps down from the car. Ooh, hell of a way to start the day. Nice! Three for me, one for you! Two and two. I took a piece of the one and, uh, took a piece out of the one you split in half, and all, uh, fractions round up to me! That is not how zombie math works! Oh my god. What? We're in trouble. Suddenly, a huge wave of running zombies crest the hill. They're fast. Uh, oh god, okay, go, 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 go! No, 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 A tire? It's done. Get over here, let's go. They all run back to the van. Max trips on a severed arm. A zombie catches up to him and pounces on him, bites his arm. The group uh. sees this from the car. No! Max knows he's done for, braces himself, then. Or. With a single swing, Patty takes the head off the zombie. Patty grabs Max, pulls him to his feet, and shoves him towards Scott. Go! But! Don't worry, I got him. Max grabs Scott and they run to the van. Scott looks over her shoulder and sees Patty cut his arm, then smear blood all over himself. He then beats on a hubcap from the burnt from the burnt out car with his golf club. Come on, you stupid fuckers. Follow me. I'm over here, you shits. The zombie descends on Patty. He takes out one after another with his golf club, but he's eventually overtaken by the undead. The last thing the group sees as they drive away is Patty's arm holding his golf club triumphantly over the horde until that, too, is swallowed up. Scene 24. Exterior road, afternoon. Max is thrown from the van. Scott follows, her gun pointed at him. Sorry, Max, end of the line. I wasn't bit. You were? We both know that. No, I wasn't. Listen to me. Listen to what? To me, I didn't. Please, look, you think I got bit in the arm, right? Show me. Max removes his jacket and shows Scott that he wasn't bit. Do you think I'm stupid? What? Uh, no, what? Do you, you need to see my other arm? Here. Max shows Scott his other arm. I see it. Then you know I wasn't bit. Do I? Don't you trust me? It's not about trust, man. You're my friend. You're my friend, but we discussed this. We promised I'm sorry. Scott, look, please, you're my best friend. You're my only friend. Don't do this. I'm sorry. Please. Ellie. Scott takes aim and fires at Max, but at the same time, Liv tackles her from the side, throwing her aim off. What are you doing? What has to be done? I, I wasn't bit. I saw you get bit. I showed you both of my arms. I wasn't bit. Bullshit. No, look. Max shows Scott his arms again. You, you didn't even hesitate. I mean, I, 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 I thought... What? What did you think, dude? We talked about this. You know what we agreed on. No, but... I mean, you didn't even... You didn't hesitate. Of course I didn't. You hesitate, you die. Okay, that's enough. Shut the fuck up, dude. Oh, come on. Liv surprises Scott and takes her gun. Fuck you! You assholes need to stop! I always get it back! Look, here's the deal. 
If you want to stay with us, you need to chill. Wait. No, you're soft. You're all too damn soft. You're too damn soft. You'll die. I don't think so. We just need to talk about it for 30 seconds before we shoot someone. Uh, hold, hold on. Well, that's it, huh? An ultimatum? Yep. Fuck that. I'm leaving. Give me my gun. That's <laughs> How many times do I need to say it? I won't shoot anybody. Just give me my gun and give it to me. Liv hands Scott back her gun. Scott gathers her things from the van. You could have shot me. I should have. Good luck. Scott leaves. The rest of the group gets into the van and drives us off. Act 3, scene 25. Interior office building morning. And this is the coffee maker. You drink coffee? Scott? You no, I, I don't. Oh, all right. Well, uh, you will. It's tough to stay awake under these fluorescent lights and generally soul-crushing environs without it. Wow, sounds like you really love it here. I work in tech support. The people I talk to on the phone don't even know what a Google is. Uh, plus, most of my coworkers refuse to talk to me ever since that Halloween I dressed up as Pinhead. Oh, from Hellraiser. Oh, you're a fan? Yeah, definitely. Pain has a face. <laughs> Allow me to show it to you. Nice! How do you feel about office pranks? <laughs> Late afternoon, Liv, Hammond, and Max are driving in the van. The mood is sullen. They look out to their left. We see a group of zombies, maybe ten, wandering around in a field. The slow kind. They've been meandering for a while. Hey. Can we stop? What? Here? That feels infested, man. I don't think it's a good idea. Did I stutter? Max, in your condition, I don't think it's a good idea the to... Slaughters. They're, they're not fast and... ones. Still, it's... Just, just stop. Please. Max looks at them pleadingly. Liv and Hammond look at each other. They stop. Max gets out of the van and walks towards the zombies. <sighs> think he's okay? Is that an actual question? Damn it. What are we gonna do now? They watch as Max approaches the first zombie. He swings his mace down on its head, which erupts like a ripe melon. He eventually removes his mace from the zombie's neck stump, then begins killing each of the zombies with emotionless efficiency. This isn't good. Maybe he just needs to get a little aggression out. Max kicks the zombie over, then hacks at it again and again with his machete. Maybe a lot of aggression. How are you? Liv lightly brushes Hammond's arm. Oh, you know, fucking devastated. You've done the best you can. Yeah, I just thought it would go better than this. I don't think there's any better anymore. Just then, Max walks back up to them. He's covered in blood. They look behind him, and the field is covered in zombie bodies. We should find a hose. Scene 27, interior van, <sighs> morning. Liv is driving. Hammond is in the front seat sleeping. Max is in the back looking out the window. Hey, but can Max, I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry. Can uh, we stop? No, no, we can't stop. Absolutely not. I am not washing zombie shit off of your clothes again. Oh no, not not for that. I just need to get out. Oh, okay. Liv pulls over. Max grabs his clothes in his backpack, gets out of the van, and starts walking. Hey, hey, where are you going? Max looks over his shoulder. I don't know. Ham, wake up. Max is leaving. Oh yeah, well. He's leaving. Hammond gets out of the van with Liv and they both catch up to Max. What the hell are you doing, man? Leaving. We can see that. Stops. I feel like a third wheel. What? what? I'm a, I am a third wheel. No one said that. No. I'm a walking liability for you both. So just, just let me take care of the problem. Come on, man. Slow down. We're a team. No, no. You two are a team. I'm just the odd man out because my teammate tried to kill, tried to off me, and, and you know what? Maybe she should have. He rolls up his pant leg to show a bite mark. It's gross. Hammond and Liv are stunned. They take a step back like it might explode. Oh, shit. Damn it. Look, just please don't try and stop me. I need to get as far away from you and everyone else as I can. We know that when the time comes, neither one of you is going to be able to pull the trigger. 
I, I mean, I, I, I can't even stomach it. So just, just let me go. You're good people. And in this world, we know that there's not a lot of opportunities left to be that way. So please just be good right now and let me leave. Okay. 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 Thanks. And forgive me for saying, but I hope that we don't run into each other again. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for the ride and um, thanks for helping me clean my shirt. Yeah. Yeah, good, good luck out there and uh, don't die. We'll try not to. Shouldn't we? No, no. If he wants to be alone, we can't stop him. We have to let him go. But go where? They watch Max leave. Scene 28, interior funeral home day, past. Liv sits in a chair in a room alone, crying. Amanda enters. Where you went off to? Your dad's looking for you. I don't want to go back there. I know, Liv. Trust me. I give the eulogy for you but I don't think it would have the same effect as her own kid. Liv cries. My gosh, I'm sorry, hon, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. No, it's not you, it's just, I'm upset and now I have to go read this thing and it didn't come out how I wanted and everyone is going to be like, that's Carol's kid, yep, the one with the shit speech. I don't think that's gonna happen, sweetheart. I miss her. I know. He'll be okay. Everything is different now. Yeah. But I'm here for you, Olivia. Okay? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. What are best friends for? Gets up. I'll tell your dad you're in the bathroom and you'll be out soon. Thanks. Are you going to be okay? Scene 29. Interior van. Day. Present. Him and drives as Liv stares out the window. You okay? What? Yeah. Sorry, I was just... Daydreaming out the window? If you could even call it that. The lengths that some people will go so they do not have to talk to me. Oh, sure, that's it. You're the worst. True. <laughs> You're the absolute worst. I've never been more proud of holding a title. Stop the presses. We have the worst man in America right here. Mom would be so proud. She never thought her baby boy would amount to anything. And look at me now. You're not so bad. It's a heck of a compliment coming from you. Just don't go bragging about it. Your secret is safe with me. They stare at each other for a moment until Hammond realizes that he needs to keep his eyes on the road. They both look forward as they drive in silence. Liv slowly reaches out and grabs Hammond's hand. A Bob Dylan song plays. Scene 30. Exterior, highway, morning. We see a large barricade completely blocking the road. There's a single guard on top of the wall. Max enters the frame and walks to within speaking distance from the guard. Hey! Stop! Hey! Stop right there! You can see the guard has a rifle. Hey, look, I, I don't want any trouble. I'm just walking through. That's not up to you, man. Okay, can I just go around? We have people patrolling the woods. All right, well, how about I just turn around then? Can't let you do that either. All right, so what? What do you want? Look, you have a choice. When you go through these gates, you can stay with us or you can leave. But if you leave, you can't ever tell anyone anything about this place. Whatever. You're a scream from somewhere beyond the barricade. Yeah, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Max turns to leave, but then his pant rises up to show the wound. Bite! A shot rings out. Max and the guard freeze. Blood blooms on Max's t-shirt. He's stunned. Shit. Max falls to his knees. He lifts his revolver, but another bullet rips through his side. This one from the guard on the wall. Max is flipped by the force, and he lands on his back. We have such sights to show you. Max stares at the sky as he bleeds out. He almost looks happy as he dies. Exterior, highway, afternoon, later that same day. Hammond and Liv pull up to the barricade in their van. This time, a few guards from the woods come out to greet them.
Whoa, hey guys, a heck of a late Ms. Barricade for Community Theater. Where is this summer stock? What? Don't listen to him. Do you mind if we drive through? Do you have plans? We're trying to get somewhere. Can't imagine where. There's not much left, is there? Can we please get through? Well, sure. Actually, if you want, you even get to stay. But here's the deal. If you decide not to, you can't tell anyone anything about what you saw here. Um. Okay. Okay, let them in. Enjoy your stay. Oh, easy. Okay. Yeah, too easy. Doors to the barricade open and Liv and Hammond drive through. Beyond the wall, there's a surprisingly busy little community that has sprung up on the highway. They park the van and they're approached by the guard who was on the wall. Hey there. Sorry if we came on a little strong. You can't be too careful these days. You understand? Welcome to Salvation. Huh? That's the name of this little beauty. Salvation. <laughs> Ain't it something? Sure. We can't stay for long, though. Oh, oh, come on. How about a tour? You might like the place and decide to stay. Loads of folks do. We can be a pretty persuasive bunch. Liv and Hammond look at each other helpless. They're surrounded by people from Salvation who are going about their daily lives. Okay, sure. It's where it is. As the guard leads, he leans in to Liv and whispers. Stay close. You don't have to convince me. Ham, I've got a really bad feeling about this place. Scene 31. Exterior Salvation. Afternoon. Hammond and Liv are being shown around by the guard. And that right there is uh, where we keep our chickens. To the left, you'll see our sustainable garden. Not too shabby, huh? No. Uh, I have to say I'm impressed. You have quite the setup here. Aw, that's mighty nice of you to say. I'll have to pass those words along to the boss. Boss? I have a question. It seems like a lot of work to put up all this crap around the highway when you can just have found a gated community or something. Why here? Oh, uh, well, you'd be shocked. We run into a surprising amount of people on the highway. And you know what they say, many hands make light work. Oh, like these two we ran into a couple of weeks ago. They help keep the peace. Hammond and Liv turn to see two men inspecting a post they've, that's been made. They turn around, and it's jackasses two and three. No fucking way. Rev, ain't that... Uh... Sure as shit is, Ray. It's two of them fuckers. Didn't think you'd be seeing us again, did you? Ha! <laughs> you know these two? Sure do. They killed two of our friends. Ah, did they now? Yeah. They almost killed us when we were trying to, uh... Shut up, Ray! They're dangerous. You know what we... You know what to do. Hammond and Liv are immediately dragged away by the jackasses. They're thrown into a makeshift jail. Like your new digs? <laughs> Let us out! Oh, you liked that, wouldn't you? Did you hear that, Trev? Huh, they'd like to be... Let Mm. Well, that can be arranged. <laughs> what? We've uh, managed to kill most of the zombies around here, but we still get a, quite a few now and then. And we are on a highway after all. You'd be surprised how much foot traffic a highway gets. <laughs> and we have to clear them out. Yep. So, we had to come up with a way to make the zombies come close to us so we can trash them. To do that, we need something that they want to lure them in. We need... Bait. Shut up, Ray. Bait. That's where you come in. You see, Salvation has its own way of dealing with rule breakers and making them useful. We take people who can't follow the rules, tie them to posts in that big field you see through your window there. It's a nice field. Real pretty. Then we cut parts of their skin off. Play it right off. The deadheads come a-running when they smell fresh blood. It's actually quite impressive. And what the blood doesn't draw in, screams do. 
<laughs> Let me tell you, you wouldn't believe the sounds that come out of somebody when you flay their skin. Mm. Works better than any kind of noise to draw them things out. We shoot them as they come out. Thank you, Ray, for your insight. No problem. So, anyway, here at Salvation, we don't like to waste. We're sustainable. Green. We wrap up the wounds at night and try to disinfect them so they'll last as long as possible. Not like we can just go pick up new folks at a grocery store now, can we? <laughs> waste not, want not. I think the longest someone lived is a month. Ooh, it weren't pretty. <laughs> no, it weren't. Jesus. Ain't helping you. Y'all fucked. Get some rest. Tomorrow is gonna suck. 32. Interior, coffee shop, afternoon, past. Hammond enters the coffee shop. He seems tense. We see Lauren, the woman he was on an okay keep a date with. He approaches her. <laughs> Hiya! Hey. They hug. <laughs> What's this? Empty handed? I told you, I wanted pictures of Spider Man. Ah, JJ, nice. Yeah, you know. The internet has all sorts of things I could look up about comic books and nerd stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, thanks for getting together on such short notice. Oh, for sure. Nothing like a quick lunch date to brighten my day. Uh, actually, about that, I don't think we should keep seeing each other. What now? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want. I, I just want to tell you in person. And uh, and and look. I I think you're you're great. I do. I just. Uh... uh okay. Um. Wow. Well, is that what I expected? But okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we've gone on three dates, so I'll be fine. Oh, good. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm bad. At things like this. <laughs> okay, well, here's a fun fact. No one's good at this. This stuff just sucks, but thanks for telling me in person. Not a requirement after three dates, but it's a nice gesture. Sure, I'm... I, I am sorry. Me too. But it's okay. Better to find out now than two years in when we're living together and you have to decide who gets the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not like it's the end of the world or anything, you know? Lauren takes her drink and leaves. Hammond stays thinking. Scene 33. Interior, cell, morning, present. Hey, you awake? Yes. Not like I could sleep in here, even if I tried. Look, I just, uh... <clears throat> I should have listened to you. I should have been more careful than we wouldn't be in this mess. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, no, it's not okay. We're going to die. Maybe, but don't apologize to me. I wasn't just following you around. You know, I made all the choices that led us here too. I blame myself completely. Don't, just don't, that's dumb. We're in this together, remember? <laughs> Liv, listen, I- uh... The jackass is bust into the room. It's Flady! <laughs> The jackasses escort Liv and Hammond to large poles set up in the middle of the field and tie them up. The jackasses have sunglasses and bandanas on their faces. They turn away for a moment, sharpening their large blades. Liv, listen. Wait a second. If we're going to die, I just want you to know. That's enough of that. Hope you like screaming, because you're about to do a lot of it. <laughs> Ain't that right, Ray? Ray just nods. Go figure. The one time someone actually wants you to talk, you shut up. Well, let's get to it. We're losing daylight. Jackass 3 approaches Hammond, seemingly eager to do his grisly job, but then Jackass 2 exclaims. Four. Jackass 2 embeds the machete into Jackass's forehead. Ray? Oh, sorry. Hate to break it to you like this, but Ray's dead, mate. 
Jackass 3 sputters and falls over dead. Jackass 2 removes his sunglasses and bandana. It's Patty! Oh, you two look like shit. Why the glum faces? <laughs> Patty! <laughs> the one and only. Let me get your asses off those poles. Patty and Ty's Hammond and Liv. How? Oh, yeah. you know, a little bit of luck and a lot of strategically placed body armor. Uh, where's Max and Scott? We don't know. Well, shite. Yeah. So glad to see you, man. Good to see you too, mate. It'll be time for hugging it out and some points later. Now, what say we get the fuck out of here and head up to the mountains, yeah? Works for me. Mountains? Yeah, man, the Anirondack Mountains are about 20 minutes drive from here. You made it. Almost. With the enforcer's dead, Liv, Hammond, and Patty have an easy time getting to their van and vacating the premises. They get back on the road towards the military base in the Adirondacks. Scene 34. Interior. Van. Morning. Present. Patty, Liv, and Hammond are driving towards the mountains. So, I was actually walking through the woods instead of walking out in the open. I saw that big old barricade, and I just decided to walk around and see what it was all about, you know? I had no idea you were so sneaky. <laughs> or quiet. Oh, it wasn't easy. I hated that shite. Anyway, I was about to steal some of their eggs and pet some of their chickens, and I saw you two getting locked up. So you stole that jackass's clothes? What, when he was sleeping or something? Oh, no. I killed him when he was taking a shit in the woods. Oh. Cool. I know, right? It may be the apocalypse, but people still have to take a few dumps here and there. Don't ever forget that, Liv. I'll try not to. Lots of things change, but some things don't. Well, guys, we have something coming up on our right. Oh, for fuck's sake, not again. Now what? Who is it? It looks like... Kids? Like high school kids, like a fucking bunch of them. What? No way. You're kidding. He looks out the window. It's true. We see a bunch of older teens in torn varsity jackets, matching hoodies, etc. They look stern. It's a pretty sizable pack. What is this, Lord of the Flies? Well, should we stop? Some of the teens step in front of the car, blocking their way. Hammond sits, hits the brakes. Oh. The high schoolers surround the car. Liv and Hammond are pulled out. We're easy, man. Easy. We're cooperating. Chill out. Don't touch me. Keep your hands to yourself. Hey, leave her alone. Hey, ease up, old man. All right, we just want you out of the car. Come on. Who are you calling, old man? You, old man. <laughs> what, this your dad or something? You fucking hate <laughs> kids. Who are you calling kids? You, Gerber baby. All right, all right, that's enough, everybody. Just play nice, eh? Search the car. How in the hell is a bunch of high schoolers still alive? From behind the sea of teens, Scott steps into view. Oh, fuck. You've got to be kidding me. You guys are like a cold sore, you know that? Holy shit, Patty! Patty runs over and scoops Scott into a bear hug. Ah. All right, you're alive. Great. I'm glad you're not dead. Well, thanks for that. Uh, hey, Scott. So, uh, what's all this? Welcome to the Adirondacks. Uh, I see you've met the Adirondack Wildcats, number three in their division. <laughs> they they do what I say. I keep them alive. It works. Right, guys? Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> wow. Just, wow. Good job. I think you're just mad that you didn't think of it. Also, the cold sore thing was the joke, by the way, Patty. <laughs> oh, whatever. All right. Devastated. Scott looks over the group. Uh, so where's Max? We don't know. Oh. Yeah. So, um, we're almost to the military base. We'll bring you. Uh, might as well. I've been meaning to check it out anyhow. Uh, let me run it by our supply manager. Supply manager? Didn't think a bunch of babies would have a hierarchy. I didn't think a bunch of babies know the word hierarchy. Shut up, man. L. Lauren emerges from the back of the group. Her eyes land on Hammond. Well, if it isn't Peter Parker. Holy shit. <clears throat> so you made it. So far. Lauren notices he's holding Love's hand. Did you find what you were looking for then? He doesn't answer. A supply run would be a good idea. We're short on a number of things and we don't want our inventory to dwindle anymore. 
uh, the cafeteria could use a restocking and all the homes on Pine are picked over. Right then, uh, road trip piling fuckers. Anyone who doesn't fit in the van, get on the roof. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Scott stops yeah. in front of Liv as everyone mills about. Huh. Liv lived. Imagine that. So far. So did you. So far. I'm not sorry. Me neither. Cool. Scott gets into the car. All right, easy kids. Hammond's driving. Aw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, get on the roof. Let's go. 1835. Exterior, military base. Early evening. Present. The group pushes through the trees and wildlife. Patty, Scott, Liv, and Hammond lead the charge. They pass a sign that says U.S. Army. Hammond and Liv exchange a look of hope and pick up the pace. A Bob Dylan song plays. During this time, we see flashbacks of each of our heroes and how they escaped the city. Scott and Max leaving the office calmly as everything in, is chaos around them. Liv watching in horror as Amanda's devoured by undead at their work. Patty holding up his bar. Hammond running out of the subway terminal as everyone's taken down one by one. And for some reason, he skipped. His coworker Phil, from earlier, isn't so lucky. They rush out onto the gravel road, standing there in... In a line, their f- smiles fade. The camera reveals that the military base is destroyed. A dying fire and smoke is petering out. It's clear there's no one here, and it's not functional. Fuck! What now? Just then, a loud screech moans. The group turns to see a large group of undead and military attire race towards them. Close up on the group as each person pulls out their weapon of choice. Then all the high schoolers pulling out various sports gear. Patty pulls down his goggles and stands back. Scott with his golf club. Camera cuts back as we hear the sounds of weapons meeting flesh. A Bob Dylan song plays. The end.